Hello everyone and welcome back to another space weather update. My name is Alexis. There is some major updates and it is Saturday, January 27th, 2024. So let's get into it. It's currently 3.38 p.m. here in Phoenix while I am still watching the Russian Schumann resonances or the ELF sonogram charts from Tomsk Russia University updating with some interesting data here. Normally, when there is an extension of time like this where there's excitement on these types of charts, I've noticed that the data will often get redacted. And I'm sure it's for personal reasons from these universities and so on. It's I'm sure it's really up to them. This is their copyrighted information. I'm just glad to be able to show you their website, show you what they're up to, what they're measuring, what they're studying over there. My birds are very excited, but I'm going to continue telling you about the potential that this resource has 200 plus resource locations where they're collecting data. They weren't specific back when I was researching this website about where exactly they're measuring what. And so I couldn't tell everybody what they were measuring exactly. And I also can't tell you exactly what amplitude they're using, but I'm pretty sure it's nano Tesla. I could show you the amplitude chart in a minute, but there is just an overall feeling basically from this information that there's something going on and the animals as well as the babies and those who are not quite i would say fully embodied into their vessel are struggling a little bit and we have discussed throughout the last couple of days about the symptoms people are experiencing and i have some wonderful data from all of you that i'm going to share in this, for those of you watching the video who haven't seen the Instagram posts and so on, the testimonies, the comments, I'm going to read a few of them for you in this video and give you some more information about what we're really looking at here. So really brief, I would say that the coloring of this is intuitive. Those of you who can understand hot and cold, this is the same sort of thing, same sort of visual, but instead of heat or temperature, we're dealing with amplitude. So it's a scale of amplitude that this color is representing. And then from the top down is zero to 40 hertz. So across time, zero to 40 hertz, what is it doing? We can see the most heat or the whiteness here is the highest amplitude area of this particular reading. And it's hovering around the average earth resonance frequency anyways. That's where this ELF burst basically is most present is in alignment I would say with the background information of earth which is this constant nearly 8 hertz frequency but you can see it sort of bridges from 4 hertz to about 16 to 20 hertz or pretty much through the first three Schumann resonances and and the range of that which we'll get into in a second there's also a few overlying or underlying blips of information, which are easier to see when you blow this up and get a little closer, which this website is only allowing me to get this close. So you guys use your pinch your little fingers and zoom right in on this if you want. But there is a line right here that's interesting to me that's kind of over top. Another little one down here, not as interesting, but the frequency where it lines up with, if you just trace it over to the left here, and you can see that that particular phenomenon happened in in around 26 hertz at hour two and a half and hour from two hour two to hour I don't know seven in Tomsk Russia time which is plus seven UTC which is up here I'm not here to speak Russian but the little help that Google Translate does for web pages is amazing and it's helped with the research so much to me be able to figure this out and continue talking about it and tracking it the best that I can while also improving my knowledge on the way and, and being as humble as possible because this is just me. I'm just doing what I think is interesting. If you think you can do better, please do so. I'm here to learn as well. I don't think I know everything. Gently, I'm here to just promote the c persistent conversation about this one topic because I don't really want to ignore it. It's not one thing in the universe. Right now, I'm comfortable turning away from. It seems like something I really, really want to look at and has been for about seven years now <laughs> since I've become aware of it. I don't really look away anymore. So 
the amplitudes of the first four Schumann resonances of Earth are isolated in this chart. They're a wash, sort of blended into this whole array of 0 to 40 hertz. You can see the bands horizontally of the four, Schum four first Earth resonances, or the four first Schumann resonances. And here is their amplitude and behavior over that time, too, isolated. So the first amplitude of the Earth, or Schumann resonance of the Earth, the around 8 hertz frequency, 7.83 hertz, 8 hertz, what is it up to? How is it amplifying over time? Now, the units of measurement for the amplification, like I said, I'm pretty sure is nano Tesla, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But it is a Russian resource, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping. It, it could be microvolts, but I don't believe that's it. But you electro engineers might have a better idea. No one's corrected me so far. No one's solidified that one for me after all this time. So either... Y'all are too shy, or you think I'm too stupid to figure it out. Either way, I'm just going to try and reach that hand out one more time. Be like, hey, take my hand. Tell me the thing. I would really appreciate some validation on that. Heads up, all y'all smarty pants out there. Appreciate the feedback. So the first resonance of the Earth, did it amplify during this window? Yes, clearly. We saw it in the previous image, but how much? Everything amplified under a 19 nano Tesla, which is not a big deal in a way. I'm surprised actually that this chart illuminated so brightly in a way, but it didn't as there's a lot of lower, you know, amplitude information here with the greens and the oranges. Most of this information here is not white technically. And sometimes we have everything is past the point of the color white with the data. And as you can see, at certain points, like maybe just even at an amplitude of 15 is when perhaps the sonogram over here, spectrogram, I heard them writing it as sonogram earlier when I just checked their sites. So spectrogram, sonogram, I've been seeing them use both terms. I can look into that a little deeper, but don't worry about it. It's okay. What I'm trying to tell you is that this energy is, it looks intense, but it's not as amplified as it usually can be, there's a lot of subtlety here and it's actually quite beautiful. You don't normally get to see this arrangement of color even. And this more natural array, or I would say this more natural distribution of the information. Obviously this previous little bump that started, it stops very suddenly. So that's sort of a thing, but it's like a little, it's like they started the engine and that brief moment where, where the engine was just about to spark and then it finally sparks and now we've just been watching the engine running. <laughs> it kind of feels that way when I'm looking at it, but that's not the scientific, you know, I'm not satisfied with that explanation fully, but it's pretty good. Sorry, I just sneezed twice. Pretty good for now. I am being kind of funny. But for real, the amplitude's not as high as it usually does go during these episodes. So it's subtle, beautiful, still affecting people. And what frequencies are being irritated the most? I would say still very normally the primary earth frequency is still amplifying the most in this situation for the most part through the episode. But you can see the subtlety there. And that's subtlety and brainwave activity from one portion of thinking into another. Those are bridging, these frequencies are bridging those gaps of brainwave activity. So watching how amplified your brainwaves are getting in certain frequencies is something that I'm really interested in and what I do with this channel. So if you didn't know that, I've tried to explain it. There's a lot to explain. And if you're new here, you can go to my YouTube channel right now. And there is the Space Weather Lectures that I have for you. Literally hours of work. If you can deal with it, Please go ahead. I've, I really did try my best in those time periods to give you my best value of information to set you on a path towards success in your own research and development and so on. So I have good intentions with that. Do what it, with it what you need to learn. I'd love your feedback still. And when it comes to the other factors, like the fact that the frequency actually went a little slower during this episode than 7.83, it 
it seems like. So the first frequency or the sh primary Schumann resonance frequency seems to be going slower when this is being amplified. So just as all of them actually seems to be going slightly slower uniformly, which is interesting, but it also it points to the how the physics of our atmosphere are being adjusted in a way to create these numbers. So those of you with that physics understanding, it is a conversation and I'm sure we're going to learn more about it, but I'm just learning that now. I'm learning those dynamics. I wasn't given a formal physics background. I just have high school level physics, not even really. I, I don't even remember finishing that. So it's coming naturally, but physics is great because it's really there. You can really test it and it should show up pretty much the same every time if you're working with the right theories and then there's some stuff that hasn't been released yet publicly that we're all going to get smart enough to know through YouTube channels and stuff like this, through the desire to want to know, you're going to find that information. That's what the internet I think is for. That's what these charts are here for too. If you needed to know this information, you're sitting here right now watching this video with me. Let's show you some more of the goodies, but basically this has been the winner. Winner, winner, this is what's going to be waking up the collective about the space weather and its effects. It's making people irritated. So this is the raw data I showed you. And here's the quality factor. Finally, we talk about the quality factor the least, but we watch it like we must. <laughs> and during this little peak, the quality of the primary Schumann resonance went to a 17. So those are those little moments where you're like, okay, that's still data. It's interesting. But hasn't really it it's been it's it moves more I would say suspiciously and I don't know again enough about the Q factor physics to fully discuss the the jargon and the lingo with you but I would invite you to look up Q factor when it comes to amplitudes of a frequency or some electromagnetic systems basically if that helps. I know maybe that's over your head way too far. I'm trying to make that bridge to we can, we're we're all going to get this. Everybody is teaching everybody everything on TikTok now and people are getting smarter and smarter just by speaking how they need to speak and reteaching stuff in a, in this new language of the internet basically. And this new language is creating coherency in our on our planet and this these energies are creating more coherency lately. I think we're on the uh, the uh, end of this storm, I would say. The buildup was difficult. A lot of you, like I said, were very emotional, irritated, and so on. But right now, we're feeling some peace. So let's just take a collective breath in together. Breathe out peace. Let's look at the lightning. Where is this energy grounding? Well, Russia doesn't give us data on this lightning map, unfortunately. But Russia's... Tomsk University maybe is getting a ton of lightning storms right now but we are seeing the biggest lightning coming in according to this data again in the United States there's a big storm front hanging out here very normal this line right here very normal area for electricity to build up Australia's got a little got a little bit of way up here grounding here over by is that Turkey yep Fascinating. Okay, let's look at the weather a little deeper. Precipitation. Anything looking out of the ordinary for me? Warsaw. Okay, yeah, Poland's been coming through. Poland energetically has been coming through for me just today. It just dings me. I don't know how to explain it. I just have these intuitive hits and it's a certain way and it feels a certain way and it's like, okay, Poland was coming in. So Poland energetically eyes on. Turkey had an earthquake I was informed about. They're also still dealing with some precipitation. Australia, nothing too wild though. Okay, so this energy coming through right now is not showing up too much in earthquakes yet or in major storms or lightning yet. What we're seeing the most is this stoking in the atmosphere of these extremely low frequencies that also are in the range of our brains. And we're wondering what that is. Is this the wave of reverberation going through the planet as that basically that geomagnetic storm that got scrapped yesterday? Is that 
what we're watching is just the silent rumbling through the planet and through our atmosphere of this missing geomagnetic storm. I'm trying to find the link of the information. The aurora is so weak right now. Let's see. Here we go. Geomagnetic storm. See, it was canceled yesterday. Now we have this amazing photograph of an aurora borealis, but this was on, this was taken on January 16th. So a few days ago, but this beautiful sine wave over by Iceland, really cool, but not the main story. It was like nothing else is being discussed with space weather really at all today. It's only this Russian resource that's really going off. And, uh, and it's, people are asking, okay, Russian resource, what about other countries? Like, don't you monitor other places? And of course we do here. We measure, the, measure this Cumiana Russia option. There was another Italian one. I've since lost it. But we saw a tiny bit of stoking in the atmosphere in the extremely low frequencies, which is a little harder to see on these maps because they have a wider range of frequencies they measure. Here, just 0 to 50. That's already bigger than the Russian chart. And these charts actually go zoom out even farther and do a bigger range of frequencies. And some days, these are blasting like crazy, and the Russian ones aren't. So people are like, well what data do we trust which one matters i don't live in russia why should i care and it's like sure pretend you aren't affected just follow the data a few more days you know what i'm saying give russia a chance is all i'm saying because certainly with all of the resources whenever they do alert us we're feeling them the resources are tuned for very fine frequency measurements these are small factors i would say compared to most things so we're seeing things that look devastational, but in a way, compared to other things, they're somewhat subtle, subtle energy fields. But hey, those of us who have been following the study a little while realize it doesn't matter. And it seems like no matter what little subtleness that we are being shown in these charts and measurements, it's still enough to visualize our pain. <laughs> and I say that with a ton of love because the pain is also catalytic for growth. It's also a part of releasing. I assume it's a part of DNA activations to basically conform with the environment as it changes. So these adjustments can be uncomfortable sometimes. They show up in many places in humanity, cryptocurrency being one of the places I observe these changes and these floods of energy. But obviously space weather and people's reactions to my posts is another fantastic resource for me to get data regularly from a vast amount of people and it's been a very big success but i have one little tiny bit of evidence about what also may have happened which again kind of went under the radar but about 20 hours ago it was posted that there was a sun diving object which is going to be pretty hard to see, but we're gonna look for it in just a second with the videos of the sun. But if you've been following the channel a little while, and I'm looking at the date, it's super tiny in bottom left. If you guys are watching on your TVs or whatever, you might be able to see this. But this is the 26th, and the 26th, 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 27th. Okay, so as soon as the 27th sort of started, this object sort of got a little closer and then it looks like we lost our data but that was 20 hours ago this was posted could be updated let's take a peek for ourselves but to see something go in and then start seeing things happening over here was a like okay not where i was expecting it to show up but i'm still trying to figure out sometimes the pathway between these resources lighting up doesn't always make logical sense but for a lot of it, it can. And usually the most logical ones, those are the ones that get deleted. I feel like it's like that validation I'm waiting for, for the logic to line up. It just like gets swept out from me. But the blackout still helps <laughs> wake people up and it still gets people talking. So it's a little counterproductive. It doesn't hit all the way. It's not that devastating. It's like that, that fine line, that gray area. Okay, so we're looking, bottom left, bottom left, bottom left, 26th, looking for an object, looking for an object, come on, come on, come on, 
Do I see it? No, I didn't see it, so it was super subtle. Okay, good. I'm glad somebody saw it. Okay, let's try over here. We're going to try one more time and see if we can see that object. The 26th. Here's the date. 25. Okay, move it along. Here we go. 26th. Here we go. Looking for the object. There it is. Yes, we see it. Here we go. And the footage is updated longer than the last post 20 hours ago. Okay, here it comes, here it comes. Wow, 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 wow. 27, 13, 27, 1400 hours. Okay, now watch for the response. We saw that CME come out right before the object kind of merged with the sun from our perspective. And here comes, whoop, and there goes an ejection out the side that it came. It was coming out. It just didn't show you yet. So this footage, again, so frustrating doing these shows because the timing of things is just a little long. And it's always like I almost have the right, almost enough footage for the day of. And then I have to just wait till the day after to get the real good stuff because of the timing, basically. But I saw it. I saw it birthing out. I saw birth from that contact there. It's interesting. This is all just interesting to me. I'm sure some of you experts out there who are watching me being like, Does she know what she's doing? Probably think I'm ridiculous sometimes, and that's okay. I'm really okay with that. I really am. We are looking at the solar wind speed all the time, seeing if there's any anomalies. The solar wind has been going down in speed. So those big coronal holes don't seem to be an issue yet either if the solar wind's going nice and slow, which is nice. So, so far, so good. Except, ooh, that's kind of weird. A little build up in front of there. Is that the sunspot? No, interesting. It's not really labeled, but it is, looks like, kind of like a sunspot storm. Sneaky little thing right there. It's not labeled or anything. Okay. Maybe it's not as big of a deal as I'm thinking it could be. Any incoming things for us? No, looks how, look how clear that is. Look at this clean bill of health we have. It's about to change because that footage I just showed you where that little, that reaction to that sun diving object was just poking out. That's going to be going towards this direction over here. If you can see my mouse towards the satellite Bepi <laughs> in a way, at least according to this model, spatially. It'll probably be going out this side. Not towards us, which is good. <laughs> Very good. I'm not complaining about that. Glad to, ha glad to see it. The impact around Earth right now, geomagnetic field is kind of warpy though. I've noticed that it's still kind of being odd. We are getting a little bit of heat over here, but it's not showing up everywhere else. So there's a little bit of incongruency with the data, I would say, with what's currently impacting us, who's being most affected. The earthquakes are showing up in interesting spots. The Greenland over here in Guatemala was sort of the, the kind of the big one that happened during this, this current Russian data. It would be that Guatemalan earthquake. And look how wide of a berth it has. And it was a depth of 108 kilometers, so pretty deep. Virgin Islands. Yes. I mean, yeah, we should probably pay attention to anything named that. So heads up, 24 kilometers deep. Okay. What about Greenland over here? The least talk talked about place. One of the least talked about places on earth, 10 kilometers down a 4.4. Fascinating. Kyrgyzstan still shaking. That's their second one in a little while. This area is kind of unstable. I've noticed all these countries we never say Tajikistan. Tajikistan. We don't talk about these places here in North America. Rarely do I hear the words uttered out of anyone's mouths on the news anywhere publicly in the media. Just so you guys know there's certain things that aren't said including even a lot of the countries in Africa. <laughs> so Middle East and African countries I would say many of us could learn to kind of review that. I'm learning great geography to be able to do these shows. It's developing quickly, but then I point at a place and I'm like, I should probably know that for sure. And I just skim past it. If you guys notice me not pointing out a lo locations, because I forgot the name probably, and I'm embarrassed. So a little bit of a reveal there, but that's what you get for being a loyal 
follower of this channel. So thank you so much. Love you guys. And Tonga is still going. Okay, Tonga. I, I didn't see this one, so that's good. I'm checking over here. Hawaii. Everybody stay calm in Hawaii. Just keep your cool. Keep your chill. This whole ridge is shaking. All the way down to Micronesia. These guys are always shaking, so that's pretty normal. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. The Mayan calendar today is the blue galactic storm. So does this to you look like a blue galactic storm energy? You've probably, maybe you've seen many, many of these charts like I have and all the different anomalies over the years, but poetically just for a minute here, kind of fun. It says, White Northern Castle of Crossing, Earth Family, Gateway, Clan of Sky, I harmonize in order to catalyze, modeling energy. I seal the matrix of self-generation with the galactic tone of integrity. I am guided by the power of abundance. Love that. Love that. Love that. Literally, have to say it many times. That was a great one. Good vibes. I felt that in my higher heart saying that stuff. Ooh. Yes, and Uranus has gone direct. All the planets are like moving direct, I heard. I didn't know that was the case, but I mentioned, one of y'all was mentioning it on Jace's stream that he did earlier today for Cosmic Origins. Check out his channel if you want to check out his stream from today. What else am I trying to show you guys? The moon, geomagnetic storm. Thank you for the new subscribers here at the YouTube channel. You guys, we're going up very slowly. All right, here we go. So we're going to go to the Instagram and review what the noodles are up to. So I also posted a video of me doing some Qigong in the desert. Couldn't post it on YouTube. Sorry, guys. It didn't really work. So it's on my Instagram and TikTok if you want to do a little Qigong with the saguaros. And then after I posted that, things started going nuts. So... When I push myself creatively in those moments, then there's like, I would say, a validation that comes in through the charts about a surge of energy that maybe would have pushed me through that new threshold as a human being, as a soul, to make that new move, to make a new choice, to create something different. It's validating. And a lot of you gave some really great feedback, as you can say. see, there's a lot of comments here. That was the primary, and then we woke up today to this, so it was much more interesting. I did a little write-up here mentioning that there may be a bunch of spiritual jargon that could pop up and confuse people about this who are new to space weather, don't know what this chart is, don't know what it's measuring. I try my best to explain it to you as often as I can, and I have videos, like I said, a all there they're all up for free space weather lectures to show you step by step which tool i use for what how to read them that that's on my youtube channel the playlist is right there and get informed look it up on wikipedia the schumann resonances check it out look up what elfs are extremely low frequencies get a grounded understanding I would say of this very basic information that is trying to be relayed and in this basic information so much can be conflated out of that because we are complicated I would say and through this we flourish through this nurturing of these heightened amplitudes or this lightning because it's supposed to be from lightning hitting the earth creating this constant charge and what creates lightning is the solar wind moving past earth so it's this grounding of solar wind that then stokes the atmosphere and sometimes there's a lot more solar wind therefore there's going to be a lot more lightning and therefore there's a lot more catalysts on earth that causes shifts in the frequencies of you and me sometimes they're uncomfortable those of us sensitive they're in my telegram chat room and they talk about it and they get through their symptoms together just look up the reactions to radiation and how to treat and deal with heightened, level, heightened levels of radiation. If you're noticing that there's correlations between these blasts that I'm showing you and you feeling like crap because they're, the research is there. This is frequency. This is radiation. So radiation of the extremely low frequencies in the 
atmosphere. And it could be from 200 plus different locations that this is coming together or just one in Russia. Either way, I've compared it with enough people against enough time to say when this is going, people are going to have within that 24 hours a definite moment where they felt their energy go into a place where they couldn't control it, I would say, and they were struggling to sort of reground, find their center, find their focus again. It's like you're getting tossed, tossed around in the cosmic wind a little bit, and if you can't feel it coming or you don't know it's coming, it's hard to prepare, but that's why we watch the solar weather so we know what to prepare for on Earth. But there's a lot of testimony here from all of you, if you want to read them all. Talking about even the owls, talking about seeing owls out, seeing that they could not sleep last night. They were, we talked about anger transference in this post where, you know, transferring your anger onward is just this never ending chain of pain. So channel it into something productive and not into someone else that you don't really want to hurt there's some personal stories on here but yeah irritated heart palpitations tremoring even we had just these buildup of energies as well as some naps now today after some like anxiety and depression it's interesting the extremes that people will go to when these waves roll through They really do get spun out sometimes. We get headaches, crankiness, sadness, yep, thirst, big one. Make sure you're getting your Celtic sea salt and water. Some people were feeling it days ahead of time, the sensitives, and those of you who are likely more impacted on the side of the earth when maybe the solar wind wave did hit us, you were more in line of sight. So maybe your symptoms were more intense. There's many of you who are also showing interest in hosting your own space weather, you know, measurement site where you can measure the ELFs at your own location. And I hope in the future you guys take yourselves up on that and do what you can to provide more data to the community. It's very helpful and uh, interesting to compare all the different spots on Earth as these waves roll through as well. I assume there would be a trend of the data, but it'd be cool to see what happens due to all the magnetic anomalies and stuff on Earth, too. But yeah, tiredness, people knocking out some for some very deep integrative naps I'm also getting messages about, so good job, everybody. You got through it. You got through the hangover, hopefully, that you didn't deserve. <laughs> and you maybe talked to a few people about what you believe might be going on and just offering this data because it seemed to resonate so much with you and the timing of your experiences which were again an uncontrollable and uncomfortable experience no matter how much spiritual work you're doing seems like this is still relevant in all tiers of society (laughs) and all tiers of focus we're all getting mushed around in these waves of lightning and so on. And it's fascinating. I love it. I love what I do. I love this study so much. It's an honor to be your friend through all of this. If you need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me through any of the social medias. You can also please go to my website, sunshindiaries.com. All my resources are there for you, as well as the signing up for my email list in case there's any emergencies and whatever happens with our planet in response to these energies, which thankfully, I didn't see anything devastating happening during this window of Russian data coming in and exciting the community, which is good, but I'm also nervous to just scroll through my x.com account and see what's going to roll past my eyes because I will find something. So... (laughs) There's always something once you're looking, really, you can find it. But I see coherency, and I'm very fascinated, very glad, very interested, feeling the high vibes now as it's kind of passing through and grounding in logically to people. As soon as people start thinking and perceiving this whole wave too, it totally changes flavor. So it's great to talk about them, in my opinion. 
makes them way less intimidating. And this one shouldn't be an intimidating one. Like I said, the amplitudes were not that high, but it just looked beautiful and it would be stunning. I don't know what it is about this particular tool, but it is amazing at waking people up. It validates something deep down in people and I it activates things. It inspires them to levels I didn't know possible. I'm serious. I'm not even being poetic. Like, law, as a scientist, I'm telling you what I've observed as people react to this resource. And if you want to make it your own and react to your wig, I would say you wouldn't be the first. And it being your muse, just, just use it with respect and participate in the study if you would please like the more people participating helps so much because not only are you seeing things prove themselves but I am too and we're seeing it in the comments and we're all together gathering some sort of idea some sort of hypothesis some momentum in the community <laughs> which is good good times I'm grateful to be here with you all today thank you for joining me on my patreon like I mentioned I can give you emailed information about these space weather blasts instead of you needing go, to go on any social media. Happy to do it. Helps the channel. Thank you so much for pledging on Patreon, you guys. It means so much to me. Thank you all again for subscribing, hitting the notification bell. Stick around. Enjoy the videos. Make a comment. I might post it on my Instagram. You guys are the best. Ride this out with your grace knowing that hey some of us are getting a little bit of a deeper look about what's really going on and seeing some coherency there following the little bit of the trends available we're not just a wash in the chaos it seems like so i'm glad to have that glad to share that with you <laughs> and onward we go sun watchers into watching solar cycle 25 this beautiful 2024 and the good news it's going to keep bringing us as people wake up stay awake take their their energy and they carry it onward so let's do another big meditative breath good vibes we're going to receive our vision now Wow, that was an interesting image. Awesome. So again, please continue your meditation and your breath work after watching this. If you can, see what visions you're going to get. I got a decorative urn in this particular vision, which maybe makes sense to somebody. But it looked like it was like a bare carved decorative urn, which was interesting. So I'm going to look, keep my eyes out for that information. <laughs> and just keep enjoying the energies as they roll through and see what they bring you. I'd be happy to hear about it. I appreciate all your comments. Bye, y'all.